Okay. We're going to do some more of this box. I'm going to put the box to the side. I couldn't decide whether to do another flagrant self-promotion for the beginning of this one, so I'm not going to. Not today. Maybe next time I'll do some flagrant uh, self-promotion to start off the stream. I sometimes like to do that just to make sure that uh, people can tumble in. <clears throat> but that's okay. We'll just get started. We've got a couple hours here, and I'm going to go through as many as I can out of this box. <clears throat> We're going to start with these three really cool books from Hollis Parrot. So these, all these are still ones that I got at the most recent comic and zine market I did, uh, which is called Panel One Comic Creator Fest, um, which is here in Calgary. Let me just move a light out of the way here and then I can see what I'm doing here. Um, for that one there, you can follow them at uh, Panel One. Um, that is the the uh, organization that put that together. It's really good. We've done it two years now. Um, I did it on my own last year because my collaborator Gord was sick. And this year I had, it was both of us, so that was awesome. I uh, didn't feel quite as frantic uh, as I did last year. Did a bunch of really great trades. Okay, this very first one is Creator called Hollis, uh, named Hollis Parrot. You can follow them at Hawksley on uh, on Instagram. And I got three books of theirs. So they have these uh, prompt list comics, books one, two, and three. Um, and they are from 2018 through 2020. And they're these really cool. You can see here, there's a little uh, um, thing about so these are basically um, prompts that they then draw something around so your your inktober stuff so you can see here during inktober of 2018 they inked a panel a day based on the official prompt list and uh, then they built an actual storyline around that so i tried to do something similar for 2021 i think it was i tried to do a um a somewhat cohesive narrative across all of but you know Hollis has actually actually pulled it off uh, in a way that I didn't quite manage to do um, and you can find their their full panels on the Instagram so they've pulled them together and created an actual moving wordless storyline really nice like stark black and white that tells the story of sort of this, you know, demon, or I guess it's, he's resurrected. It's this person resurrected from the, from the grave and coming out of their own, their own grave and then eating and, and then finding this weird, there's this weird storyline of them trying to kind of make their way. And the way they pulled these things together into a single comic, like some of these were probably original panels and they pulled these ones out and made them individual panels and then made this whole layout around it. Really, really good. They basically get... It's, it's hard to make a cohesive storyline from prompts alone um, because you have to contextualize these things. And it might not fit, but to find a way to make it fit and have this thing so you, you know, you're actually following um, the storyline of, of how it's working is quite wild. The sort of duality that's happening at some point here. And then they tell you all of the prompts they did. A newly dead demon struggles against his devious instincts while wandering a confusing world. Really cool. Really cool. Also did one for 2019, continuing the same storyline. So where it finishes in 2018, it, it continues off with this same demon. And the, the angel they saved in the book one Still plays a role this wingless demon or wingless angel C 
sees him falling down and decides to uh, jump down and help. Gets a three three headed Cerebus, but it's like a cute Malamute puppy basically. These are really good. I love the style and incorporating a lot of texture and and pattern into these stark black and white things just just works just works really well this panel is really effective using your character as part of the positive and negative space in this spiral really good Just really good. You can tell the eye that they have for the composition. And then the third one, so that's from two years ago, three years ago now, oof, two and a half years ago now, the heroes have escaped hell, but the guardian is coming after them to try and pull them back, back down here nor there. Yeah, and like I said, I, I tried to do something similar. I came up with, uh, as I was going through prompts for Inktober in 2021, 2020, 2021? I don't know, can't remember. Maybe it was 2022. I guess it was 2022. I tried to do this, and I wasn't nearly as successful. I eventually got to where I was like, you know what? The hell with it. But you're talented enough, you can do it. Maybe I'll give it another stab at some point. You can see now they're they're actually quarreling. But he's being controlled by the guardian. Oh, it's just so dynamic. But from panel to panel, you can see that. That narrative, you know, they, it still makes sense. And our angel in the end ends up getting his wings back. Really cool. Hoss is very, very talented. And their um, their Instagram is really good. They have some, some also some really nice, um, let me see if I can bring it up here. Uh, is it going to come up? Is it going to show? Give me the, is it not going to show for me? Okay, there we go. Here's their Instagram. So you can see they've got some really cool character designs as well. Uh, and do a lot of work in, you know, incorporating colors, not just black and white that they focus on. This one's really effective. I love this. This bison shape with a, a pretty um, iconic sort of Alberta sign, um, scene. Very, very nice. Really well done. Uh, the next person I want to showcase, I think I've got three of theirs, uh, two of theirs, sorry, Cytoplasm KD, look at this, great, this is a, a, a sticker, I make toys and stuff, come on, do I have to do that, like a, like a YouTube Cytoplasm.kd. I make toys and stuff. I'm just going to grab the link here for you. So as you saw on the sticker, it's at cytoplasm.kd. This one's called Failure to Thrive. Got these really great 
plant drawings. But also this sort of basically like Old West story in it. About a wanted man. Really good illustrations of that too. But this is a more modern this isn't really Old West. It's more modern than that. Seemingly. Again, a nice, like, wordless story. I love it when people find a way to tell a story uh, without any dialogue. That's KD Faulkner. This illustration is really nice, too. The Paisley. I really go for stuff like that. Just beautiful. Really well put together. And they got this one as well. I think this is theirs, yeah. Called Beauty. Again, basically wordless. You've got some some you know, onomatopoeia kind of stuff going on. But otherwise, it's a wordless story. Of this rat looking for a, looking for some food. And then following someone in their, in their fancy kinky boots. All right, here we go. Now we get into some actual, it surprises you because then it gets to, to an actual bit of dialogue from the rat I am now caught in between never able to return to my naive ways never able to unsee such a sight yet my depravity brings me comfort for it is familiar and I fear my next encounter with beauty then he goes for it and runs into a Runs into a dance club. Into the unknown. Really good. Oh, there's a link tree for them as well. Really nice. And I love this repeating pattern that they've set up. Really good work. So that's Katie Faulkner. It's really good stuff. We're going to kind of rapid fire through some of these, um, but we're going to take our time as much as we can. I like to not rush too much. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. I have to gush over this, um, this cover for a moment. Uh, let me just make sure I get there. Uh, the bus. Aha, got it. So Mick Fuss, they have, this is a uh, Mika Smith. Probably saying that wrong. There we go. At MCFUS. They deal il illustrations and comics. Beautiful card, by the way. Really something. This cover, though, I have to gush about this for a moment. I, as a designer, I go crazy for things that use the positive and negative space uh, in a composition. And this is as good as I've ever seen for somebody using that in a way that's really powerful, but really clear, really easily read but also really retains, you know, doesn't, doesn't sacrifice the ability to also see what the renderings of the stuff in the positive space is. So that's the difficult thing is when you try and do this stuff, you often either make it so you lose the readability of the overall design or you lose the readability of the things you're, you're actually rendering. They don't here. They get sleep away. Sleep away is perfect. I can read it so easily, but I also see how they didn't sacrifice the composition of the trees at the same time. It's made in 2022. And really had fun with it. Yeah, once again, positive and negative space. 
used really well to like to draw your eye these to each of these things and then draws it up through you know you got those perfect sight lines that pull you right through the composition when i teach design work um this is something i talk about a lot is design you know sight lines and your design pulling people's attention around so this is great And I love that it focuses a lot on this sort of like this uneasiness around this rural setting. And it's basically uh, these two characters talking. The, cro the hatching work is really good. Kept loose enough that it's um, it doesn't draw your eye away. You know, they've actually sort of faded it and kept it really loose but then also pulled right into the texture work of the you know this person you know looking down at her knees and into the owl done so well and showing that almost sort of you know eerie disconnect between them and the you know the parent that they're speaking to the parent or grandparent look again at this positive and negative space they've almost used a, a video game sensibility here of of having um transparent walls but using architectural elements to still suggest where everything is well uh the adult here is out smoking a smoking a dube Yeah, really, really effective. Everything in here. Like, I'm just seeing such a smart idea of composition everywhere. And the emotion is so well conveyed. So pull all the shades. And the main character is just really, really afraid of this this night away, this sleep away. I think we've all been there and had that sort of fear of being in a, a place you're not really used to, especially when it comes to sleeping somewhere you're not you're not comfortable in. And you sit in the dark and try, and then suddenly realize I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh wow! Just look at that able to make this silhouette from the character's perspective. I'm jealous of the, of the, uh, the talent on display here. This could have very easily been impossible to see, but they managed, you know, they controlled it. They keep the lines loose, but there's a power that they have in still keeping it really able to to see what's going on. It's so good. It turns out it's just a bad dream. Really good. Sleep away is very good, very powerful work. Very smartly done. I love that one. Next. Uh, so this person you'll see in a couple of different ways. They are Moon Jelly Creations, but also Kelly. I love this one. What kind of cat is that, it says. Let me make sure I get there. Moon jelly beans. They also go by Luna, by the way. Very nice person. Met them for the first time at uh, panel one this year. I had had not met them previously. They've been doing some really cool stuff on Instagram, by the way. So give them a follow for sure. I love this one because I love cats, as you know. What kind of cat is that? 
I've got three voids myself, so I love this one. Where you, all you can see is the eyes. So we go through some really cool stylized identification of cats. You've got your goblins and your bald goblins. Really beautiful style. I love, like it's, I see so much confidence in the drawing of this. Got your floof. I used to have a floof. Your orange. The banshee. <laughs> I've got a criminal, I've got a void criminal at the moment. I've, I've found them over some, some plants like this before. Got your raggedy and your chonk. Look at that, chonkers. Oh my god. So good. Fancy and liquid. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Really good stuff. I can't wait to see more of their stuff. Um, they seem to be putting out a lot of, a lot of great work. So I'd like to see, I want to see lots more from them. Uh, hopefully I will see them in another show at some point here. Cats come in all kinds, so while reading this guide, don't be surprised if more than one describes your cat. Exactly like I was saying. Moon Jelly Creations. They also have a website there. Really good stuff. Doing cool stuff on, uh, they're doing cool stuff on uh, Instagram right now. They, because they have some, uh, I think one of the people we've talked about previously, um, Jillian Fleck. One of the people we talked about previously, uh, Jillian here. Uh, Jillian makes, um, in addition to doing comics like this, they also create uh, custom, uh, customized inks from all sorts of different stuff. Uh, cauliflower and cabbage and acorns and mushrooms and all sorts of things. So um, Kelly got them got themselves a. Uh, uh, some, I believe some acorn ink. And so they've been doing this crazy, like horror, almost like body horror stuff on their Instagram. Really cool stuff. Like, you know, ghouls and skeletons and really cool stuff. So it's a good follow. You'll see some really neat art on there. I met Hal at the show as well. Really was very generous with their stuff. Gave me these really cool stickers. There, this is their business business cube card here. They're an illustrator, a comic maker, and a beast slayer. So there you go. Let's uh, go to theirs. It's Hal. Uh, Hal underscore monitor. Hal was really nice. I loved this one. I was very happy when they gave me this uh, this cool old TV, old broken down TV with shopping list stuck to it. Really nice. And this really cool character design. Let's see if that comes through. So they gave me this really nice one. Oh, it's just beautifully, beautifully printed um, called The Slow Decline. And I'm going to hold this right up here. Feel free to uh, scan your screen and you can find the full web comic of this i'm gonna hold that for another second here so that's hal comics this is from this year called the slow decline we've got some cool anthropomorphic animals going through a ruined world when the world ended, they happened to be out of town. Now two co-workers, Rudy and Tom, are alone in a city that is making less sense by the day. From anomalies at the breakfast table, glowing fog in the afternoon, or disembodied screaming through the night, it's all just another day at the end of the world. The slow decline is a told out of time with new entries. Uh, slow, the slow decline is told out of time with new entries shared every week. And it's got... A really beautiful color scheming on the uh, colorization on the colorization is very good very nice good palette really beautifully done so 
Just two co-workers trying to make sense of a ruined world. So I'd say check out their their feed and check out their um, uh, the web comic of this because they got new stuff coming out every Thursday. I think it is. Yeah, every Thursday. Yeah, so this great this this is the first seven weeks. Oh, really good. Good teaser to get you into it. I'm definitely going to be checking out uh, further entries of this stuff. We're ripping right along here. We're only 25 minutes in. Okay, this stuff is from um, someone named Crash Reynolds. They're very cool. Another person I met for the first time at uh at this year's panel one comic creator festival you'll find them at indelible crash they do these really cool things these the dear human stuff and these sometimes human robot art um both really cool they are really once again they're, they're these young people are coming up with these really great business cards where I usually like I'm an old print designer. So I love this. I love tactile stuff like this. But they're finding ways to make these things in ways that really push the mold. This has like a little entry of their dear humans thing. Dear humans, I regret to inform you that I do not know what happens after we die or while we live and breathe or even while we sleep. What I do know is that you are the he you are here reading this because you are lost and looking for answers. You are not alone. It's good writing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, here's the first one. Here's Dear Human, which follows that kind of stuff. I'm going to read this one out because I love this one. I'm just going to read the whole thing. First off, Despite what anyone has said to you, you are fantastic. Despite what thoughts your brain tries to drown you out with, you are worthy of good things and happiness. Secondly, it's okay not to feel okay. Don't get angry with yourself for feeling emotions. You are allowed to feel emotions, even if they are bad emotions. Third, it would be a, a good idea to create an emergency crisis plan for the days it's hard to get out of bed, let alone function as a human. Who you can contact, why you are important, activities you can do to take care of yourself. Fourth, on the note of taking care of yourself, here are a few things you can do to treat yourself with love on the hardest days. Have a bath or shower, drink some water, change into clean clothes, Cuddle up under a blanket and watch your favorite movie. Read a book. Make sure to eat something. Tell yourself it's okay to take time to rest. It is okay to ask for help. Do you know why it's okay to ask for help? It's okay because you matter and people do care about you. It's hard to believe when your brain is constantly whispering that you are not good enough and everyone hates you. You are not alone. I believe you are good enough, and I don't hate you. I hope your tomorrows are better than your yesterday. They have a Etsy store. Is that going to come through? Oh, I think it will. They have a Etsy store. And a Patreon. Crash is awesome. Um, this is something I'm actually seeing in a lot of young people's zines right now, is a lot of stuff that's talking... It's, it's one thing that makes me feel really hopeful for this, you know, for um, the next generation of artists is they are taking very seriously the um, the message that it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to um, to let people know and those like empathy, sympathy, self care, self worth, uh, and that's that's nice to see. Here's one from twenty twenty one from Crash. 
with a really cool cat on the cover with a mountain. Know yourself. This is cool, like, gets you like that almost uh, clipped and collaged together pop art. It's cool. It's just, it's just cool. No notes. Very good. And here's the sometimes human robot art. And here we're getting to like old school zine stuff. Like just great like stream of consciousness. Their current soundtrack they're listening to. Silver Sun pickups. What else they got in here? Did I some Dido? Jose Gonzalez. I always boy, crosses from Jose Gonzalez. That's just a good song you can listen to any time of the day. Anywhere you are. And this is just like a really great you know, somebody dumping their brain out on paper, uh, which makes some of the best zines. I, I don't think I'm confident enough in my zine making to do this kind of stuff, or maybe not even confident enough in my in myself. I think I make this kind of stuff for myself, and I don't put it out there in the world. So I'm always, I'm always really um, interested when I see somebody who is putting it out there and dumping out their soul. It is... Uh, it's laudable. It's very laudable. It's, I give them huge, intense kudos for doing that and having that courage and the ability to do that. I like talking about things like boundaries and emotional, emotional and physical boundaries. Like, and then putting out your, your, um, Like your um, theories on the world and human behavior and human relationships. It's amazing. Find a cure as long as we can hold our lungs in. Yeah, really cool. Crash is very, very talented. Very happy to meet them. Next, you may remember that last time we were talking, we were talking about um, a creator called uh, Cam Hayden. Some of this stuff is uh, is going to be related to that. This is stuff from uh, Chad Colpitz. Uh, I've been wanting to meet Chad for a while. Um, Chad is a regular um, collaborator with, you see Cam Hayden's name here. Um, we got three people, three like three of the coolest people I, I know in the scene. So Chad Colpitz, who I was very happy to finally meet in person at uh, Panel 1 this year. Cam Hayden, who's always consistently been one of my favorites. And I believe, I believe, is this the right, is this the Miller that I know? I think it is. I think it is. Do I have more stuff from them? Uh, maybe not. I have, I have more work. Um, doing the colors in this one. So here's a little ash can that they created. Pinocchio and Jesus. So basically, <laughs> Pinocchio uh, asks Jesus to, to make them a real boy. And the work in here is just, it's just <laughs> really great. Yeah, because what happens is, how this was explained to me from Chad is, uh, Pinocchio is gets just tired with the fact that every time he he tries to whack off, he starts his hand on fire, and starts himself on fire. So he asks Jesus, "Please, can you make me a real boy?" <laughs> and we follow, and we follow the uh, the insanity that ensues from uh, from this, and it's it's a series of. Of, of one and two pagers of Pinocchio and Jesus as they go through kind of an adventure together. It's it's very good. It's good, it's dirty, it's gory. It's like all my favorite stuff. 
Here he is getting swallowed by the whale. It's very, it's very, very good. Oh, let me make sure I get, uh, sorry, I don't have, uh, pulpits. Easy one. It's an easy one. It's just Chad underscore pulpit. Pulpits, sorry, with a with an S on the end. So I I love this. Oh yeah, I also forgot. Um, they also uh, go back in time. <laughs> in this, I believe there's a time machine involved. I haven't I haven't read this all. <laughs> yes. Pinocchio wants to be able to uh, whack off like a real boy. Jesus is going to help him, but they need a, there has to be a time machine involved. I'm going to read through that one very soon. And then Chad has uh, this other series called The Streaker. We'll see how much of uh, this I can show on stream. We'll find out. We'll find out together. So it's Chad Culpitz and Matt Garbutt. There's mature content in here, so I have to be careful. <laughs> the cool thing is, uh, Chad also had... I should have picked one up when I was at uh, Panel 1. He's made action figures for the Streaker. These, these awesome... He's got a small one like this, and then one that's like an 8 or 10 inch tall the Streaker action figure. They're hilarious. And they also have their own imprint that they do for their printing. Um, we'll be going through another one that they've done called B-Movie Garbage at one point. And we'll probably go through um, some other stuff as well. Um, I know I've got B-Movie Garbage, which is another one that uh, Chad and Cam Hayden did. Uh, and I've got the first two issues of Streaker. I think there are more than that, maybe. There are two out for sure. So we'll be going through probably more stuff that they do. I don't know how much I can show, but I don't think he usually shows the streaker too much full frontal. But yeah, you've got the streaker learning. Lot, lots of lots of dude butt in this one. It's Chad's got a good sense of humor. Chad's got a good uh, a good sense of everything. It's very funny. Very good. Got the streaker with some crazy powers here. Can glow in the dark, cause people to kind of uh, melt. It's very, very good. You can find more of the streaker at Alpha Comics. I don't know where Alpha Comics is actually. Yeah, the streak is pretty pretty good stuff. Since we're at it, we're gonna do a quick flip through of streaker number two as well. Just a quick flip through. And we'll move on to the next one. We'll probably take a minute and a half break at some point here um, for a quick ad thing to keep those pre-roll ads from happening. Streaker 2, once again, we got... The Streaker's trying to be clothed, but he can't be clothed. He's he's too noxious. He's got the he's got the acidic kind of thing going on. The Streaker will never stay clothed for long. It's such a great recap. This happened, also this happened, and then it ended with this. It ended with a bomb. Yeah, his glow in the dark will not allow for clothes. Because he's just melting everything he touches. He just melts every damn thing that he touches. Like, the dude who got slammed through the door in the last one, he slips on some uh, some goop and just gets just gets liquefied as he runs into the uh, into the streaker. I'm not sure if the streaker dolls that he's made are glow in the dark. That will be a question I'll have to have for him next time I see, uh, next time I meet Chad. They're very good. 
get some cool ads in here for other things. Yeah, cool series. Cool dude. Okay, we're going to take a bit of time here and talk about one from Andrew Howell here. You will find Andrew Howell at... Uh, I just need to check to see if there's a, an underscore in there. Sometimes there's an underscore. Good stuff. At Jolly the Biscuit. So this is an older work from... Um, Ooh, yeah, some, yeah. Yeah, definitely was based on Acura. Yeah, absolutely. Good eye on that, on that one pager. So here's, uh, this is an older work from, uh, from Alan, Andrew Howell. Andrew's, Andrew's got a really fun Instagram feed. Um, This is a series of different. He's got such a fun style. So Andrew does the, lots of these like really fun, almost caricature styled renderings in, in his comics. I'd love to tell the story about the, uh, the financing and printing of this, but I don't think it's my story to tell. And it's probably a story that would only make a lot of sense to Canadians, so I won't I won't tell it. Andrew will have to check out Andrew's stuff. Andrew constantly puts out um puts out basically something that would be a one page, you know, two pager uh story like this on their Instagram feed that are really fun to read through. There's Takes on all sorts of stuff in here. Takes on the cops. There's some Ghostbuster stuff in here. All sorts of stuff. Just really good, really good. Gags and storylines. Uh, we're going to be talking about Andrew a bit more in the future as well. Um, because that's one of the books that I had shown uh, on the first episode. I said that we will eventually get to this bad boy right here. I'm very excited to show people this one. But we're going to have to get to it when we can do like, we'll probably do a whole like hour on just this book called Beyond. Um same thing, you can follow Jolly the Biscuit or you can go to jollybiscuit.com for Andrew stuff. It's really cool. I put everything back in the shell here before it all falls over. So, yeah, very good stuff. Okay, we're going to. Do, yeah, we got time to do one more before we do a quick break. Yes. Look at this treasure trove. Look at these. So, um, Robbie Grzeski. Let me find Robbie's stuff here. Uh, Robbie, 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 where are you? Robbie, 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 Robbie. Robbie, 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 Robbie where are you, Robbie? Yes, Robbie's got one that I always forget. Robbie's awesome. So Robbie, and that's with, is that four Bs? Yes, that's four Bs. Gotta remember that. Rob, b b b b g Give me the first, uh, give me, I think, first five issues of this book that he's been creating for a while now with uh that's uh, uh nicole is his sister i believe they are siblings nicole we went through some of nicole stuff last uh i think last week um i think 
or if we haven't, we will be going through some of Nicole's stuff if we haven't already. I'm pretty sure we did uh, Nicole's stuff last week, um, which is really awesome. And so he's been creating this with his sister for quite some time here. Uh, and they got the first five issues of this fellow here who's kind of tormented. Like we got uh, basically it there, got the, the sisters from uh, uh, The Shining. There's Janner who's kind of haunted, kind of haunted. And you can see he's got missing wings. It's a pretty wild story. Got some blood and guts. You can see them talking about losing his wings. It's a pretty wild, it's a pretty wild story. Hey, look at that. Seal of the go governing body of hell. It's a pretty wild ride of stuff. Hey, and there's a one pager for Wolf Hands, which is a really cool comic as well. Yeah, so these are kind of horror themed. Really nuts. Oh, yeah, I love this. Look at that. Behold the power of Christ. I am the body and uh, the word of the heavenly daddy. Giving them the. Oh, it's pretty wild stuff. Lots of weird body horror. I think as it goes on here, I think, you know, the composition gets gets better and better as it goes. I was like the old Francis Bacon uh, portrait, if you've ever seen that one. I can't remember which one that one is. Once again, we're getting into some pretty wild stuff. Let's see. Let's read a short excerpt about where where the story is by the third uh, third one here. It's uh, during the battle of the top floor of eternity. Trinity is split into three parts amidst internal doubt and strife. The sun traveled deep into the knot to rescue the forsaken as punishment for the rebellion. The Holy Spirit was forced to take charge of hell, appearing as Lucifer in order to maintain a facade of equilibrium and hopefully quell f a further uprising. And meanwhile, the father waits catatonic, palsied, and drooling on a rusting throne of gold. Good stuff. Deep, deep, deep stuff. This is really good. Yeah, so I think as this goes on, as this gets further and further into it, uh, and starts really pushing the boat out, it gets better and better. See where we're at by the fifth one. What will a partial spawn of Trinity and his shepherding of the masses of Earth mean for the structural integrity of eternity? What does the sun and his harm his army plan hope to accomplish by confronting a collapsed deity? What can Stan and the Hell staff do now that they're trapped by their own jailer? Jeez. Yeah, so Stan is basically a janitor in hell. I believe pretty cool I dig this one that's Robbie and Nicole Grzetsky probably saying that wrong too what can you say what can you say okay so this next creator uh, is Nick Nick Friesen. Uh, I think I'm pretty darn sure he's out of Winnipeg these days. 
And I've also put the uh, second one, which is a, an official account just for this series, Olivia Say. See? Olivia C? Olivia C. Let's say Olivia C. Olivia C? Olivia C. So he, Nick has created an entire sort of universe for this. So it's it's meant to really be a um, an indie rock comic. There are accompanying songs and accompanying I think maybe video work as well, video and, and animation work. I could be wrong on that, but I think it's an entire sort of multimedia world. Um, and so it's really cool to see the effort that's put into it. And we follow our titular character, Olivia, as they kind of navigate this world. And it's their, their life, their love life, their musical career. You see there's a new single based in this world. It's just, that's really cool. When I see that kind of, um, that sort of bigger world thinking. Rama here. There's me hey, look. Can I hold that up far enough that it'll is that gonna is that play? Is any of this play? Is that gonna work? Is that a is that a QR code that you can scan? I don't know where it will take you. I assume to a page for Crush Rama, right? Which I do not I don't know if I Follow that thing. Where my phone is somewhere. My phone is somewhere. Don't know where. It's not here. It does work. Yeah. All these things work. I don't know exactly where this one takes you. I hope it takes you to music like Crush Orama. That's that's my hope. But who knows? So yeah, they they're doing a 10 issue limited series for this. And I've got what, the first five? Yeah, I got the first five of them. Once again, very um very uh generous with their with their work to to trade me for this stuff there's another one there here we go if you want to hear songs from this issue so each issue seems to have its own soundtrack like the amount of work that goes into this let's take a look on the inside cover of a couple of these yeah look at this so each one of them hear songs from this issue like we got a we got a, like a josie and the pussycat situation or a gem situation but we've got you can have the accompanying soundtrack to each to each one as you go through them which is awesome the only other thing i've ever heard of that happening in a comic situation was james obar who did the crow which is one of my favorite sort of uh i've never read the crow all the way I, but the movie is was very deeply influential on me. Um, but James O'Barr had a, uh, a, a band actually create a soundtrack to accompany his graphic novel of his original for the crow. Uh, and there were like three or I think three different iterations of this thing. And so this is that kind of thinking where you're, but that was done after the fact where this is happening concurrently with it. So they're, they're doing, QR codes to to let you listen to music that's happening in the issue while you read it. And that's great because it like it curates. So you know you could be listening to this song as you get to it. This song, a resurrection. So good. Look, we got like a a uh, Scott Pilgrim kind of looking thing almost. Ah, it's all very good. I see lots of this stuff and I just say, boy, people just have more creativity and bigger brains than I do to, to do these things. And look, here's a one page for, uh, for holding lines with another QR code. I'm not going to, it's too small for me to hold that one up. Here we got one for these two, Femme Fatales. Like there's so much there's so much thought behind this. Nicholas has really built a, a 
universe. And it's incredible. Well, look, we got some behind the scenes stuff of the people who actually did the, uh, were created the music. Andy Cole was Guitars and Synths. Nicholas Friesen, who's the um, person who's created the comic book, did the lyrics and production. Matthew Powers on the drums and Olivia Rain on the vocals. Here's actually some behind the scenes of them creating the music. It's just so incredible. It's the kind of thing I'd love to do. It would it'd bring together a lot of passions for me. But boy, I can't imagine the amount of work that goes into it. This one goes back into full color. And I think this is where this is where I I like Nicholas's work the best, as in this sort of this sort of flat color work that that he does. This character here reminds me of the uh, uh, Linda Cardinelli's um, character from Freaks and Geeks. Something about the military jacket always does it. Yeah, this is where I, I like Nicholas's stuff the best, is when I see this style. Hey, look, if you want another, there's another Akira reference. I'll take every, I'll take every Akira reference I can get. Look at this. Here's some, here's some gem looking stuff. Ah, so good. Yeah, I have not read through all these yet, so I need to go. Uh, I need to go through these and uh, and try. I need to try to keep up with it since we're what uh, we're five issues in. I need to get keep up with this series. Really cool. Oh yes, I got these two from, where did I get these from? Where did I get these from? I don't know that I have, um, I don't know that I have any stuff for this, any uh, links for this one. I'm gonna look to see. Uh, maybe, no, that's not them. I don't think I have any any stuff I can share for this one. Um, these were a couple of. There was a, a young man there on this one here, and uh, he these were being given away for free because um, they're sort of um, teasers for other things. Um, but I I gave him a set of my zines anyways, just because I wanted him to have them. I was just like, hey, I want you to just I just want you to read my stuff. So this. Eat the press. Might be able to find them. Let's take a look, see if we can find them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is them. Yeah, here we go. Excellent. So Geet the Press uh, have a lot of different stuff from different folks here. They uh they Toad Hex, so this particular little periodical that they're putting out, I've got issues eight and nine that each one, well, this, I re actually recognize this piece here is from, I'm pretty sure this piece is from somebody who goes by the uh, handle um, God's Chosen Puppet. Yes. We're going to go through some of their stuff eventually. So we'll you'll actually i think you'll see this piece again at some point and we'll give them their due at that point so yeah this stuff is pulling it together i believe so get the press is totally donor funded um yeah and they've got stuff on here so here's some names that you'll recognize perhaps uh some of this people so jillian fleck who we talked about the person who makes the ink and things, they've got a piece of theirs in here. Which one is theirs? Where is, which one of these is Jillian's? 
I'm trying to recognize which one of these is Jillian's. I think this one? No. I've seen this one before, though. Boy, I get confused on who's who on the back. Okay, so... Da, 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 da. I don't know. Is this one Jillian's? I don't know. Anyways. This is a lot of stuff. Some of these things I've seen from other folks. And they're very good. Um... But this is cool. I like this kind of thing where you, you get a bunch of stuff together from different creators all put together. I like collaborative zines and collaborative pieces like this. These are cool. I'm going to have to seek them out and see. I, I'd love to have a peace of mind in something like this. I, that's a goal I had for this year is to try to submit to different publications and get my stuff into more collaborations with people. Is what I'd like to do. Uh, we've got what two pieces from this fellow? Yes. What do we got here? What do we got here? Boy, are we? I think we might be at the end. Excellent. We're doing great. I think we're actually at the end of my pieces for panel one for this year. With this one here, with this stuff from the Reading verse. Uh, let me find the information for them. Uh, da, 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 da. Scott, yes, that's you. Nice guy, really, really nice guy. So Scott Douglas Redding uh, puts his things all under this moniker of the Reading verse, uh, and he does these cool, like very very punk rock feeling stuff like really feels handmade uh self printed this one's from 2020 it's got that sort of like really punk rock feel I don't even know how to explain the aesthetic of it, but it's got it, it evokes such a feeling. For me, it takes me back to like the late '90s, early 2000s. It takes me back to like the style of indie stuff that was coming out around that time. Is the feeling? I don't know if that's something they were going for consciously, or if it just is where my mind takes me. But that's. This, that's where this takes me. This takes me back to like the early aughts and like this and the underground stuff that was coming out around that time. It's like super heavy colors, heavy, heavy treatments on everything. Like early early ideas on like design and desktop publishing all this kind of stuff and that amount like that squishing together of these different things and like rich textural where you know like really thickly applied inks that's where this takes me that's where my mind goes and once again this is something that was printed by uh Chad and the folks at uh, Tongue and Cheek. I actually should talk to them at some point about doing some uh, some uh, printing for me. If I start doing some larger, you know, more comic comic sized stuff, existential romance comics. I like this one. Quite a bit as well. Got a real more painterly quality to it. Look, it's like a velvet painting, this one, on this side. Like, it's just, it feels like I should be able to put my hand on it and feel the velvet. It's just so thickly applied, this black, this like rich, rich black looking out over the lights of the city yeah i like this one a lot i like i really love the way it's put, put together yep 
yeah, it's like romantic punk rocky velvet paintings on every single panel. Bit of psychedelia. One last moment. This one's actually, oh, you know what? This one's actually not the same person. Sorry, I, I got that confused. So this one's the Reading Burst stuff. This is actually from Jim B. I totally forgot. I totally forgot. This is from Arc of Jim B. Which you'll find at Art of Jim B. Jim is from, where's Jim from? I can't remember. I don't think Jim is from Calgary here. Jim, I think, came in from somewhere else. Or maybe he is from Calgary. He's got awesome. I wish I had picked up a card of his. Maybe I did. Maybe it's floating around in a box somewhere. I can show it again uh, for the time. He did these really good. I'm going to show it on screen here. Uh, let's go to my screen here. So here's the art of Jim B. Um, he did these awesome repaintings of uh, the old Batman cards that came out in the, uh, what would that be? That would be the late 80s, right? And some of them he has as his uh, business card. So it has this and his information on it. And I, they were so cool. I should have, I should have grabbed a bunch of them. It's so cool. I just love it. What a neat thing to do to take those those old cards that were photo cards basically and then do a, a cool painting treatment on it. Yeah, look at that. Really good stuff. Jim is really nice. Here's a moon night, Saturday night moon <laughs> Saturday moon night fever. Yeah, Jim is nice. He does good work. You can see here that that sort of thing yeah yeah i thought you might remember those those old batman cards they were cool like that that yellow frame they had on them was so iconic and that the stencil font is just it was too perfect it was too perfect like what a like so the second you see that card these those batman cards you get taken right back there cool uh, you know what? I got one more thing I'm going to go through. We might actually cut a little bit early today. Let's see. Actually, we might be able to go the whole rest of the time on this stuff. So, speaking of Chad Colpitts from earlier, uh, saying that he does a lot of work with uh, Cam Hayden. This is, this is cool stuff we're going to check out. We're going to see Cam Hayden and a ton of other people in here. We're going to do kind of a special on Freaky here. We got 50 minutes here, just about 45 minutes. We got 45 minutes. Yeah, I think everybody, everybody had at least a handful of those cards. That was back when we were picking that stuff up at gas stations and convenience stores and all that. You know, you could get those early cards everywhere. So let's do a run through of Freaky of a bunch of these issues of Freaky. You're going to find some stuff from uh, Cam Hayden in here, but also we're going to kind of do a flip through of all this stuff and see what's there. Hey, Snurble, how's it going? We're about to do a deep dive into a Freaky, a Freaky magazine. This is a becoming a new obsession of mine is, um, let's see if I can find... I wonder if I can find Freaky Magazine somewhere. Bear with me. I'm going to do a quick Google. Freaky Magazine from San Francisco, California. There we go. Awesome. Found them. I think I found them. I'm going to follow them quick. I'm going to put it on the screen. This is becoming a new obsession of mine is to try to I pick up uh, whatever new issue of Freaky that comes out because uh, Cam Hayden normally has. Every time I see Cam, um, he's 
he he's had something in each of these i believe uh so we're gonna do a flip through and see if we can find cam hayden stuff uh and check out what else is happening like this is here's your mad or panic or crack for a new generation of but this is more geared for us people who hearken who remember that old stuff let's see if we can spot Let's see, contributing artists and writers, a whole sack of nuts. So, but we'll find, we will find Cam stuff in here somewhere. I don't know where we'll find it. I don't remember, but let's do a flip through this. So Freaky is very cool. Oh, here we go. Here's Cam. This is Cam Hayden stuff right here. If you remember, Cam Hayden is at Lance Goiter. Um, does the really cool, gory, such good stuff and how how exciting for cam to have the very first piece in here and this like this is how i remember mad or crack magazine being back in the early 90s this is what i remember but this is way more uh like mature themed Tips and techniques for hall monitoring, just like a real cop. So they play on a lot of that stuff because this is, you would have seen this exact thing in Mad or Crack back, back in that era. You would have seen that kind of stuff. Like here's, here's a badge for your hall monitor, teacher's pet and then snitch and tattle. But plays off of that stuff for us. For all those things that we re we remember reading all that stuff. Nature's weapons of self destruction. Like and look, we're getting some cool photo based stuff here. Like I can I can feel the ink on this one. Look at that. You see that? Look at the ink that came away. Like this is real deal. This is the real, the real sloppy stuff. Yeah, you got this beautiful, like it's everything I remember, right? It's everything printed on newsprint. And like the ink is so thick here. Like, let me take, oh no, look, my hands are all, all inked up already. I was gonna take a clean finger and show you how much I could pull off the page in one go, but it's thick on there. That's why, that's the way I like it. That's what I want. Ivan's Terribles. Here's a guy. He's peeing into two separate urinals. Now that is impressive. Yeah. I actually pulled enough ink off that, that page that it was clear to me too. I, I wanted to see if someone would say something. <laughs> yeah, Freaky is just so cool it's 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 as punk rock as i think as my mind's eye remembers uh the stuff from that era what's behind the green door we know this magazine is in black and white but trust us this door is green green with the unknown what perverse for, forbidden activities could be transpiring salaciously behind the opaque barrier is it a portal into new realms of experience that will shatter your senses and fill your innards with strange new passions? What secret trysts of taboo nature cavort beyond this keyhole? In your, if your curiosity is suitably, suitably aroused, simply hold this page up towards the light to expose the stark naked truth. Uh, can I do that quickly? I can do that quickly. We're going to do it. We're going to discover what's behind the door. Look how quick I go. We're going to do it. I've got a battery up here that's powering a couple lights. We're going to discover my curiosity is peaked. So we're going to, we're going to discover together what's going on behind this, this door.
Look at that. Look how quickly I can create a light. Here we go. What is it? What is it? It's two freakazoids schnoggin. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That's a great idea. There's there's your fresh take on the old uh, uh, Mad Magazine fold, fold in. You get a freaky see through. That is awesome. That is still cool. Once again, one of those things where I go, God, I wish I'd come up with that. Uh, I think I had, I can't remember if I had a similar idea or not for the stuff we were doing with Genki. Uh, we were trying to come up with all sorts of, of weird gimmicks for our covers and that like, what could we, what would be a weird thing we could do for a cover? Mm -hmm. And I, I have some ideas that I still want to do, so I don't want to say them. Because I had some ideas about uh, different using different materials for covers uh, and different ways of binding. And I'm hoping to actually revisit some of those as time goes on. So I won't, I won't say too many of them, but I, I'm sure I had one where I was talking. Maybe I wasn't talking about a see-through one. I think I was talking about... I had, I had an idea for one. I'll tell you one. Patent pending. Patent pending. Uh, I want to do one issue that is about the um, labor that was used for um, no, I wanted to tell a story that was about uh, Canada's history of uh, Japanese internment camps during World War II. And I want to have the cover be able to be detached and folded together like origami. Or at least have some some sort of... I was thinking the cover would be something where it could be origami, where maybe it has the lines or something to, to be actually turned into a crane or, or something like that. Um, that's, that's something I still want to revisit. So pat pending. Yeah, freaky is very zap. Yeah, what are some of those other ones? Um, like there's, yeah, zap comics. Um, also, I think about uh, Panic magazine. Do you remember Panic? Does anybody know Panic? It was before all of our times. It was a precursor. It was a pre no, it came out the same sort of time as Mad Magazine. Called Panic. That was put out around the same time as Mad Magazine. So we're talking the, what, 50s? So before any of our time. But yeah, I, I just feel like there's some of this stuff harkens, like, reminds us of our nostalgia for Mad Magazine. Like it's like I said, it's it's as punk rock as we remember feeling as a kid. But yeah, I think you're right. There's there's a lot of zap comics here. I actually that's that's a pretty big um a lot of, of Robert Crumb stuff is like a pretty big blind spot in my in my comics knowledge. Like I've always been aware of Crumb, but I just wasn't exposed to very much of it. So and that's I mean, that's me and most comic stuff. I don't actually know that much about comics. I, I am not. You can ask me anything about a video game or give me a reference to a movie and I'll probably know it. But comic stuff, I have so many blind spots. So here they're serializing something by the looks of it. This is something I like about what they're doing as well. Like They also have a little bit of heavy metal uh, magazine in here where they're, I think they're taking... Um, some of these things and they're they're doing it serialized in multiple issues that's something I've always wanted to try and get into as well like and that once again is my thoughts of wanting to do uh, submissions to publications is try to do some serialized work would be cool um, because then instead of that I tend to get into that idea of um, I tend to get into the idea of like, well, if I'm going to make a book, it has to be all together and totally completed in one big volume. 
before you do it. But serializing stuff takes the pressure off and you just put out a chapter and a chapter and a chapter. Yeah, Crumb is Crumb is dated. Like like everything from those eras. It's all a lot of a lot of dated stuff. I just love that you also, in this sort of style of publication, you always get such a wild divergence of, there isn't like a house style. It's not like a Marvel comic, where a Marvel comic, you're going to have, yes, you're going to have different artists, and I think they've done a better job of having a, a wider range of work. But for a long time there, Marvel was like, you knew what you were getting, like the, your your Silver Age stuff all looked exactly the, alike, except for a few people. This stuff, you get wild, wildly different stuff. And that's what I want to see. Kaiser Wilhelm II opens the Kiel Canal. Look at that. Look at that, Kaiser Wilhelm. That big, big bastard. One picture being worth a thousand words, this is going to save you a lot of reading time should you one day need to know about Kaiser Wilhelm, Wilhelm II's opening of the Kiel Canal in Germany on June 20th, 1895. Very cool. Here. Distance Learning Educational Supplement for Idiots, Part 2. So cool. Yeah, I just kind of want to like pour through every page of this stuff. Yeah, and you get some cool photo stuff of the good old days. They're basically doing like fun caption time. Yeah, I'd love to try and get my stuff into something like this. Maybe one day. Famous Monsters of Adland. Here are the Universal Monsters trying to sell you stuff. Bloody Mary mix. Teepee. Frankenfurters. I don't know, this is cool stuff. I, I dig this stuff. Oh look, they got themselves a uh, a fold over here. I don't want to do it. Bend this page on the dotted line. Fold the third column over the second column. Line the punch line on page two up with the setup on this page, and then laugh. Oh yeah, look, it actually, it gives you a sort of a, just a innocuous looking thing on this side, and then you fold it over and you get the, uh, the punchline to it. That's cool. Gimmicks like that are just fun. And they do talks, do a, uh, I think it's a, yeah, a interview with a, with a band. Weirdo the cat been in here a couple times. And some more Cam Hayden. The Tennessee boy fiddler. This is cool. I might have to actually uh, check these folks out, see whether or not you can get a subscription up here in Canada. Issue 7 was the first one I knew of that Cam was in, uh, but I had it. Look, I got Cam to, to sign it there. But he was also in issue six. He might have been in some of the earlier ones as well. I don't know. I'm over the moon with this stuff. Just 
just to see the amount of different different styles on on display. At Influencer University, like us and subscribe us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like for me, this this is Mad Magazine style. This is the kind of stuff that that Gordon and I we do we do stuff like this where we'll we'll just write a bunch of dumb jokes and then you can, and then I'll do a design around it. Like we would do, actually do a pamphlet. We would do a a brochure or a, like a program you could give out. We do that with our with our cat comics that we do. Uh, I don't know if I've shown them on here. I'll do it. Remind me. I'll do it next time. I'll show you some of the cat comics we create in the next uh, one. Because next next episode, I'll do some flagrant uh, self promotion again. Decide not to do it on this one. Oh, look at the beautiful art here. Like this is old EC art, all over. Like this is this is Jack came in uh, Johnny Craig style. This is very Johnny Craig. A vomiting ba Batman. I love a vomiting Batman. Obnoxious drunks through history. <laughs> uh, Crossing the Delaware, there's one dude just, just barfing off the side. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and the nice thing is all the, the all the collaborators you're finding here, they're all independent creators, even though they're pulled together in this sort of uh, freaky magazine. I think basically all these guys in here, they're all all the folks that are in here are. Indie creators doing submissions, you know, jumping from one cool thing to the next, but pulled in into this really cohesive. There's some more mosquito and spider. We saw some of that in the last one. This looks like a Cam Hayden joint. It sure is. Snake bit. I can always tell a, a Cam Hayden joint when I see one. Ooh, I love this one. The Little Big Bastard from Jim Agpalza. Look at this little big bastard. Oh, I love it. And they got some little little gags that go throughout the uh, footer of the uh, magazine. Which I think is a cool idea. Another flippers. See where he's going. Got the dude digging his way to safety to the landfill. Guy trying to make fire while his campsite's on fire. And dude trying to talk through the uh, can on a string. Someone with an iPhone. Oh my God! Another see-through. I I <laughs> I put my thing. I put it away already. We won't do the see-through. I'll just show it to you. What is Timmy's big birthday present? It's a bunch of demons. I put my uh, light box away already. <laughs> I should have kept it out. I should have known there'd be more. Look at this beautiful rug. It's the old pull-through rug thing that somebody did. Shane Buckley of Renton, Washington did that. That's super rad.
I don't care if you, if anybody doesn't like me flipping through Freaky. I'm gonna flip through the next two two issues. We're gonna do it. I'm too enamored with this stuff. It's just so cool. Miasma of Terror. Look at that. Like I get such a yeah, I get that feeling of like Zap Comics, of Mad Magazine, of other EC uh stuff from the 50s you know there's that uh element there's a bit of an element of horror got some hot like there's influence of like 60s and 70s hot rod culture um all the independent stuff coming out through the from the 50s through to the 80s all that stuff is all kind of combined here here we got another sort of Favorite cafe, is it hip or horrendous? Where this is my sensibilities of like pulling together some jokes into a like a designed thing. Here's some more Cam Hayden. We always find some Cam Hayden, which is nice. It's nice to see him in every every issue here. Freaky's head section. A cranial collection of noggin-centric comics to fill your head with nonsense for all five senses, or at least four of them, depending on where your holes are drilled. You know, there's nothing like a little trippening to let the demons out. Or in, if you prefer. Heads are going to roll, baby. Those are cool. Some cool collage like yeah we're getting into some really wacky stuff you know you got your sequential panel based stuff and then you just have like a page of collage the guy whose head wouldn't stop growing <laughs> eventually this guy's head just grew into space Wow, that's awesome. Hey, you saw me, Racket. You saw me before I saw you. Got him. You're in your stream on my stream? You did my... Did you do my idea? <laughs> Where I said I would just stream your stream and then talk over your stream? It was that great idea we had? Well, I'm going to have to do it to yours eventually. Tired and not drunk? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Racket. Racket. Are you sure? Now I need to... Now I'm looking... I'm on Twitch.com right now. I'm on Twitch.com. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. Oh. Ooh, Racket's not on... Not streaming at the moment. I thought maybe you were doing the... Uh, I'll stream your stuff and talk about it. We'll, we're going to do that, you know. We're going to do that. It's going to happen. Let me bring up all my stuff again. There we go. Yeah, put those potatoes. Put them potatoes in chat. Potatoes in chat for Racket. Lots of potatoes. Good to see you, Racket. We're doing... We're running through Freaky. Freaky Magazine. I'm just over the moon with this stuff. And my friend Cam Hayden has lots of cool stuff in here. But I'm, I'm just going crazy for everything. Making your office feel more like working from home. <laughs> Maintain a pants optional dress code policy. Why the hell? Why not have pets too? Place the laundry machine next to the photocopier. But don't mistake the two. More Mosquito and Spider. We've seen Mosquito and Spider in the last two ones. It's cool stuff. Awesome. More caption stuff.
I don't know. I want I want to get in this magazine real bad. I would fear what I'd be like if I was ever actually drunk. Yeah. I don't really drink anymore. It's uh I'll have one or two. Freakouts. Oh my god, another see-through. And me putting... Why did I put my light box away? What's cooking? Oh, it's a big dead rat. That would have shown through. Can I... Oh, look, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see it. Can you see it? Look, we're getting the effect. Here, I got another light. Look at that. You can see that. Everybody can see that. That's what's cooking. Yeah, man, I need to uh I need to get my stuff together. I I I just have a lot of stuff I want to produce over the summer, but boy, I wanna I wanna try and get in this. I need to come up with something though. I'm just not super quick at coming up with uh, comic ideas. I'm quick to come up with ideas in certain times, but oh, I love this thumbnail sketch. He grows out. He wants to take over and then he gets his head chopped off and has to grow over again. Oh, that's a scary thought, eh? What if, what if your thumbnail has a sentience? And it keeps it keeps growing, and every time you clip him, you kill him, and he and he's rebirthed and regrows. Think about that. I did skip the flipper. I did. I did. I figured. I mean, we can we can look at the flipper. We can look at that flipper. Let's do the flipper. Here's the flipper. Okay, I'll give you the setup first. We got a lady. She's, she's. On the board with knives all around her. We got a barber with uh, something coming through the door. And we got a submarine. Let's see where, where we go with this. Oh no. The knife thrower sneezed. The knife thrower sneezed as he threw it. We got Rapunzel's hair coming through for just a trim. And we got a fish in love with the submarine. We did it. Look at this. Look at this guy. He get this guy just turned. He vibrated and turned into a bunch of cats. <laughs> this this old man in the trench coat was actually uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cats in a ten cats in a. Uh, in a trench coat. That's all it was. And they just wanted to eat, eat those birds. That's a good one. Kyle Bridget. Nice work. Oh, look. Now, see, now we're getting into the Mad Magazine stuff. This is where you're, like, super topical. So somebody's uh, taking, the, taking the piss out of Wednesday on... Uh, yeah, Saxton is a basically a bunch of cats in a trench coat, for sure. For sure. So this this is like old school. Well, not even old school, because I mean, Mad Magazine had been around since the 50s. But this is your early 90s Mad Magazine or Crack Magazine kind of thing, where you are lampooning whatever came out that, that month, basically. Charles Adams crushing her under his book. I like that they kind of have this like the the mascot for it kind of introduces each thing almost like the Crypt Keeper. It's almost that Tales from the Crypt or Vault of Horror or Haunt of Fear. Yes, yeah, so you get him as kind of your introductory guy. 
More mosquito and spider. I like these just because they have lots of lots of yicky details. You always have some cool. I think it's been this same person each time. This Marinook has done these hot rod things each time. It's cool because people basically then almost get their own column in each thing. So this this fellow does a you know a, a one pager that's been in basically a running thing. This silent but deadly's been in there a couple times. That was the Loch Ness monster one in the last one. Oh look at that misfit skull. So yeah, suddenly there's some competition in the. Uh, Rat Fink era stuff. It's just cool to see these creators get this, like, kind of, uh, you know, here's the stuff that this person's been doing with the with the sort of um, caption-based stuff of old photographs. I don't know. It's it's just cool to see because then you can start to to see your your favorites. Rabbit reminds me of a zine I got from a guy in San Francisco. Oh, cool. You know what? Even might be that it might be that artist. You never know. Like a lot, a lot of these guys, they'll do their own. Like Cam does tons of his own stuff, but also does a ton of uh, submissions to um, to books like this. I love this. This is one of those. This is the stuff I I actually like the most out of Mad and Cracked was when you'd have a uh, like a big two-page spread with just lots of gags and you could just float around and look at each gag. A big monster about to eat a uh, Star Destroyer. Got the hot rod uh, Mars Rover. I always like this is the stuff that I always love the most is when there are just tons of little gags. Um, and there's some stuff that you might see that someone wouldn't someone else wouldn't see. This and more lurks in the lair of San Francisco's Slow Poisoner, plus a song at slowpoisoner theslowpoisoner.com. Cool. Written by Andrew Goldfarb. I know that name, but I, I don't know if it's the Andrew Goldfarb I'm thinking of. Some more Little Big Bastard, which I really enjoyed in the last one. Very cool. Very, very cool. Let's see where we're at on time here. We got 10 minutes before the pre-roll turns back on, so and it tries to run another ad. So we're going to finish within the next 10 minutes. Oh, cool. So he's put like the, the Little Big Bastard in with some really almost like photo, almost photorealism. Also throw on the screen here. Just a quick note as well. Uh, you know, the reason I uh, have been turned on to Freaky, I was not aware of it before, was because of Cam Hayden, which is at, uh, at Lance Goiter. On, uh, we went through some of his stuff last uh, last week as well. So if you go to at Lance Goiter, you'll see tons of cool stuff from Cam. And we've been finding it as we go through here. I I haven't noticed, I haven't seen a Cam Hayden in this one yet. Oh, here's another flippers. Got an old dude, bald guy with a fan behind him. Got a spaceship and got a guy out on a ledge. What are we going to see? Guy's toupee going in the face of his uh, eating companion. Aliens are taking a poop. And what's this here? Oh, the guy's only on like a half story. Because the cop is the cop is standing right there. Cool. 
What did the butler see? Let's find out. What did the butler see? It's a hippo in a bikini. That guy's eyeball is freaking me out. Turn off that light. Totally digging this thing. Ooh, look at this little board game they've set up. <laughs> the chance cards are great. So this is, on this chance card, your wife accuses you of cheating. You admit to everything before realizing she's talking about the game. You must get a divorce. That's great. I love I love fake board games. Um, Mad Magazine put out a board game, which I owned as a kid. The goal in it was to lose all your money. It had ridiculous rules. It was it was very fun. I I tried to make people play it as often as possible. Hey, this stuff. Here's Cam Hayden. This is Cam Hayden right here. This is the Cam Hayden. We spotted it. We found it. I knew Cam was in here somewhere. Cam actually does play uh bass i want to say i think he plays bass in a band called the agriculture club i have yet to see them live but i'll have to do it oh okay well that's that's it that's all the freaky we got freaky freaky uh fairy tale on the back of having some freaky humanoid Humanoid frog babies. Those little rugrats. Brandon Hicks. Where do I know Brandon Hicks from? Ah, okay, I love that. Okay, that's it. That's where we're going to stop today. Um, we've gone through everything. Because I picked up... This was still in keeping with panel one from this year. Because I picked up... Uh, these three issues of Freaky from Cam. I had issue seven already. That's it. Panel one success. We've gone through everything from panel one. I've still got. I've still got so much more. So, look at this. Look at this stuff. There's B movie garbage. Oh, it's all upside down. I got B movie garbage. That's from Chad Colpitts and. Uh, and Cam Hayden, I've got some stuff from Nick Johnson, who is out of country at the moment, so I didn't have any new stuff for him. I picked this up. Uh, I picked this stuff up at uh, Edmonton Comic Expo last year. So we'll go through all this stuff next week. I got another box over here. I got a box top full of stuff. Look at all this stuff. Hey, there's some of my stuff. Look at that. We'll do some flagrant self promotion next week. And we've got. Oh my God another very heavy box here of stuff that I picked up uh, lots of this is from the AGA the Al uh, Art Gallery of Alberta comic and zine market from uh, late May mid May of this year so this is probably the stuff we're going to go through next because this is the la uh, the most recent show before panel one that I was at uh, it has some great creators from more uh, northern Alberta uh, as well as Calgary so this is probably where we're going to start next time. That was probably super loud, sorry. Um, this is where we're going to start next, is this box. But we'll get to all this stuff. And uh, I want to start putting some irons out there to uh, try to get some zine stuff from other independent creators from other places, maybe. We'll see what happens. I had some, I know I was talking to uh, uh, Mother of Carp, uh, I think it was, um, and maybe Arapu about how there's you know there's a very good uh creative scene of course in portland uh so maybe if i could get some stuff from around there maybe solicit some stuff to get sent out to me that i can maybe send some of my things out to people do some tradesies over over the mail system might do that we'll see okay i mean if you wanted if you wanted to follow me 
I mean, if you if you wanted to follow me, I'll put that on the screen right now. If you wanted to follow me for any reason. It's at, with these two hands, YYC. And, uh, yeah. Oh, that's the bunny guy. Clyde Always. Let's look. I'm going to look that up. We got three minutes before the ad tries to run. I'm going to look up Clyde Always. Surrealist and... Let's look at this. We're going to bring it up. Clyde Always. Surreal San Francisco. Look at, look at how much stuff this fella does. Caricatures. Portrait commissions, original artwork, private performances with some raucous storytelling near the Bay Bridge. Look at all this. Clyde is a man about town. Oh yeah, look at all this. Cool. Neat stuff. Okay. Before an ad tries to run, we're going to go. Thank you so much again, everybody.